Now we all have our ideas of what our perfect Halloween Horror Night event year looks like. Whether it was that past house or scare zone that we loved coming back to the event, or an IP we've never actually seen at the event finally make its way there, us HHN fans spend a lot of time wondering what could be when it comes to Halloween Horror Nights. And not too long ago, I got a comment asking me if I could do this very thing in a video. So to say thank you for helping reach a thousand subscribers, I thought I'd make this super special HHN dream map video talking about what I would like to see at the event. And if you know me, you know I care a lot about HHN, so this isn't as simple as just throwing a few properties on a map. I wanted to take time with this idea, let it marinate, try out different concepts, and honestly, I'm really happy with what I've come up with. So without further ado, we have my perfect Halloween Horror Nights event year, aka the Screamport year. So before we jump into specific houses and scare zones and things of that nature, I wanted to set up some parameters for this event first. First off, this will be taking place, of course, at Universal Studios Florida with 10 houses, 5 scare zones, and 2 shows. Now you're probably wondering, hey, you made a whole video talking about Islands of Adventure and Islands of Fear, why are you not including that in this year's event? Mostly because I feel like this is a more simplified, boiled down version of Halloween Horror Nights. The 10 houses, the 5 scare zones, the 2 shows, we're familiar with the locations. It's not a big guessing game as to where things are going to go and how logistics are going to work because we're adhering to the map we already know and love. And specifically the map from last year using last year's locations which gives us 5 soundstage houses, the Fast and Furious queue, both sprung tents, and both parade buildings. As well as scare zones in the Avenue of the Stars, New York, San Francisco, Central Park, and Hollywood. Would. Now, as I mentioned, I have big ideas for this event year, and that comes with an event-wide theme. And the event-wide theme that I've chosen for this year is the movies. Plain and simple, we haven't had a straight movie-based year in a long, long time. And it being me, you know I love HHN history, and you know I love the icons, so I had to include an icon into this year. Well, there are two movie-themed icons that seem like perfect fits for this year's event. That is the director and the usher. So we have a year dedicated to the movies featuring the director and the usher. Now let's hop into the specific houses, scare zones, and shows for this year. I think it makes most sense to start out with houses, as that's the main attraction of Halloween Horror Nights for most people. And the first house we have in Location A found in Soundstage 23 is Ripped from the silver screen. This is the director's icon house, even though the name is more commonly associated with the usher. And here you will enter through the prop warehouse to gather props for the director, but once you realize it's a trap, it's too late, and you're stuck inside at the mercy of Paolo Ravinsky. So yes, we visited the prop warehouse before in the hollowed past. And while the prop warehouse can be great for housing some fun HHN Easter eggs that we all know and love, I feel like just conceptually, going into a prop warehouse makes sense for the character of the director. We're going to have the director sort of popping in and out between the shelves, using the shelves as a good hiding space. And I think it would be great to have specific scenes based on the director's past films that we hear about in his backstory. And of course, with it being a director house, you gotta have those famous kills like the bathtub. However, an aspect that I think could set this house apart would be a really trippy ending, where you go into the psyche of the director. And I think this could be played off featuring flickering film reels. I think of this like a large extended version of his scene from HHN Icons Captured, really just celebrating the history history of this very well-known and popular icon. Next up in location B in Soundstage 22, we have a return of a property that was featured at Halloween Horror Nights a long, long time ago, but we haven't seen it in a good while. That property is one of the most famous Universal films of all time, Jurassic Park. JP Annihilation would be themed to the abandoned Jurassic Park sets from Jurassic World. It's pretty obvious that the facade for this would be the Jurassic Park gates. Then you would maybe go through the Discovery Center, the destroyed InGen Labs, and the van storage. Kind of just playing out the events like they did in Jurassic World, just with more spooky stuff happening. Of course, the highlight of this house would be the puppet dinosaurs. They could also use shadows on the wall to create that sense of looming terror. And I think it'd be an interesting parallel to have a giant T-Rex finale similar to the Stranger Things Mind Flayer finale inside of this house. This will be one of the bigger houses in this event year, but I think the Jurassic franchise is overdue for another entry at Halloween Horror Nights. Speaking of a property overdue for an entry at Halloween Horror Nights, we have to talk about Scream. Located in Soundstage 23, this would see the classic franchise get the slasher treatment like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Halloween has in recent years, where we give a classic slasher film a whole soundstage to play around with. I think if they follow the formula that they did 
did for Halloween last year, including a scene before the main facade of the house, I guess. I think this could be a great place to include the Casey Becker opening scene, as that's probably the most famous scene in the Scream franchise, let's be honest. And this house would follow pretty closely to that first film, as most of the scenes in that movie, hell, every scene in that movie, is iconic and worth representing at Halloween Horror Nights. It wouldn't be too hard to pull off, and it is a heavy hitter IP and a no-brainer when it comes to an event about movies and the legacy of horror. Now, I talked about the director having an icon house, and in location D, Soundstage 24, we would have our Usher icon house, called Malice at the Palace. I would love to return to the Palace Theater, get a great Palace Theater facade. However, this Palace Theater would be a little more disheveled than when we saw it last. As my story for this house would find a group of content creators inspecting this abandoned Palace Theater that's had all of this haunted history. And once they go inside, well, they see why it's haunted. I think this house could feature the ghosts of past Usher victims, as well as the tortured mortal victims. And of course, when you talk about the Usher, when you talk about the Palace Theater, you gotta have some mention of Phantom of the Opera, the film so important to the Usher's backstory and his death at the theater in the first place. While the Usher has had moments beyond his appearance in 2009, I think this house can really expand on his terrifying persona that we haven't really seen in a good while. I'm thinking something like Graveyard Games and sort of the story behind that house Meet Silver Screams, the original Usher house. Now, I know with The Last of Us being recently announced for Halloween Horror Nights, that there's been a renewed interest in video game properties of the event. So I took advantage of that and picked a video game that I think is one of the most atmospheric. Creepy, but has a really cool setting that I think would be great to explore with the Horror Nights budget. In location E, we would have... Bioshock. I think the facade for this can be the welcome lobby and rapture, and you'd really just be following scenes from the first game. You go through the medical center, you go through the masquerade ball, you go through Neptune's bounty, you go through Hephaestus. I think this house can balance big grand set pieces and dark tight hallways, as the Bioshock game is scenically beautiful, but has its moments of terror. Obviously, the main characters for this house would be like the spliced, and of course, a few big daddies sporadically thrown out, and I think this would be a good house to incorporate a double or triple scare at the end. Now, I know Halloween Horror Nights has to be careful with this, especially in a soundstage, but I would really love for this house to incorporate water somehow. They did it with Depths of Fear and it worked really well, and I think Depths of Fear is a good baseline for understanding how this Bioshock house could turn out. The next house brings us to the Fast and Furious location, which I'm being honest is kind of hard to place. You have part of a queue, an outdoor portion, and a tent. It's kind of hard to put one big house here, and obviously it's more natural to split it up between two IPs or two different themes. But I chose one property for this house that I think could be our cult classic throwback property. I'm of course talking about Evil Dead, and specifically, Evil Dead 2. This could be a great comedic house with a lot of extreme gore, as in the movie, and I really think this location can pull a lot of those great scenes in the movie together. Like the laughing scene, everything involving Ash's hand, the deadite Ash scene, and I think the outdoor portion is perfect to house the scene where Ash creates his chainsaw arm. As on the Unmasking the Horror Tour last year, they did mention they did want to put a chainsaw in between both the queue and the tent. And I think the facade for this tent could be the pages of the Necronomicon, as I feel like this is a great moment to separate us from the cabin and take us into the cellar for that final battle. And of course, you gotta end it with the portal scene. But Evil Dead won't be the only comedy house we have at this event as an event without movies isn't truly complete without Slaughter Cinema. But this time, we're taking a different approach to Slaughter Cinema. Located in Sprung Tent 2, we have a semi-sequel slash spin-off titled Slaughter Cinema Holiday Special. Yes, this is exactly what you're thinking it is. You would enter through a wintry version of the classic Carrie Drive-In. And I chose Sprung Tent 2 specifically so we could have a Christmas light tunnel. Come on, how cool would that be? And I could see this being an all-new slate of movies based on Christmas traditions, as well as some sequels to past Slaughter Cinema projects. Maybe a movie where the critters from Midnight Snack 2 are actually sent to children as pets a la Gremlins. Or maybe Shady's kids beat up a department store Santa or something. I would love to see a Krampus creature feature. Maybe Maybe something involving some evil elves or a dark Santa. I think this could really play up the camp, but immerse you in the world of the holidays. I think it would be a great way for this anthology house to reference other holiday houses. Things like Psycho Scarapy Home for the Holidays, HR Blood and Guts, and Krampus. But I like this idea because it isn't super derivative of the Slaughter Cinema films. While it might have references, it's not just a sequel trying to repeat the success of the original Slaughter Cinema. Now, our next Sprung 10 house is another original, titled Man of a Thousand Faces. The story for this house would loosely be based on Lon Chaney Sr., the famous makeup artist that created the looks for many of the classic Universal film characters from the silent era. 
including early universal horror films, most notably 1923's The Hunchback of Notre Dame and 1925's The Phantom of the Opera. So I'm thinking this house could really play up that 1920s Hollywood atmosphere. However, this would be a little bit of a twist, as the makeup going on here is a lot more brutal. This guy's using blood for paint, removing faces, and just generally mutilating people to create these characters, playing up the gore factor to an extreme here. And of course, with this being inspired by Lon Chaney, Senior, there would definitely have to be references and easter eggs to Phantom of the Opera, Hunchback of Notre Dame, and other classic Universal film characters that he did the looks for, but doing it in a little more of a sinister way. It's kind of hard to describe this one as it's a hybrid of different ideas and really only loosely based on the life of Lon Chaney Sr. I really just wanted to take the tortured nature of some of his characters and blend them together in a very dramatized haunted house. Obviously, this is not meant to be disrespectful to Lon Chaney Sr. and his legacy, just playing around with the different characters and ideas he brought to the table all those years ago. Aesthetically, I think this could be a mix of the body horror from Vanity Ball, with the location and ambiance of puppet theater captive audience, and a little bit of the dark comedy from the horror makeup show thrown in there. Finally, we have our two parade buildings. And for our first parade building, I wanted to insert one more IP, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Now, knowing me, you know I had to incorporate some universal monsters onto this map, and why not do it with a monster we've yet to really see fleshed out in a full-on house? Sure, he caught a pretty great scene in the 2019 Monsters House that'll definitely be an inspiration for this one. You can have the entrance marked by a crashed Rita, and I think this take could be a really fun, grittier take uh, like they've been doing on the monsters recently, where the story would be that the Rita has obviously crashed, and the crew members are sort of running around scared not knowing what's going on as the creature's hunting them down. This could be one of those houses that has multiple phases. As you start out in a more jungle-like setting, then maybe move to some dark caves and end underwater like those scenes from the 2019 house. I love the creature from the Black Lagoon. He is one of my favorite Universal monsters, so I think it's a perfect opportunity to incorporate him and really flesh out his setting and his story. Finally, the final house in the second parade building would have to be a return to a classic, a place that we've been to in Halloween Horror Nights past, but we haven't quite seen it like this. This house will be called Psychoscarapy Reprogrammed. In this house, we're going back to Shady Brook, but this time in the 23rd century, and follow the story of a cyberpunk themed Shady Brook, which has been reopened after being closed for so many years, as an offshoot of Shadow Creek developed a new cybernetic therapy program, and while it seems cool on the surface has actually caused a lot of problems. We could enter through a futuristic Shady Brook facade with some floating cars. I think that would be really cool to have some cars look like they're levitating off the ground to really sell that future atmosphere. You could do some interesting costumes and effects with the very inhumane procedure scenes. I think it would be interesting story-wise to go through a testing facility and use some really disorienting visuals to set up that moment. I also think this house could be one of those where you don't make it out in the end borrowing a little bit from Hellblock Horror and featuring this final control room that leads to the place blowing up. So that's it when it comes to the houses, but what about the scare zones? Our first scare zone located in Avenue of the Stars would be like our table of content scare zone, titled Wicked World Premiere. The location for this scare zone would be in the Horror Nights Boneyard, which is very similar to the Universal Studios Boneyard featured in that area of the park back in the past. And the Boneyard was basically an open field for discarded movie props, usually bigger props like like vehicles and larger set pieces. Like the prop warehouse, I feel like conceptually this works as it's a reference to Universal's days as a movie studio, tying back into that greater movie theme, but also allows you to honor the legacy of HHN history that comes with the icons especially. I think you could have two grand stages on either side for both the director and usher, and you'd have characters from each house and other scare zones kind of roaming around. And it would be cool for the director to have a cast and the usher to have a cast, a lot like the All Night Die-In scare zone they did back at HHN 25. The next scare zone will be over in New York, titled Legendary Truth, Evil Obscured. In this scare zone, we'd sort of see a prequel to Case Files Unearthed, as we see the demons that inspired Boris Schuster's many novels come out and lurk in the shadows in this moody 1940s noir type of setting. I think this would be one of the moodier scare zones with lighting and music to really sell the scene. And I think this would be a fun scare zone to have, a lot like Psychoscarapy or Sweets Revenge, where the scare zones are freely roaming and can come and talk to you. Obviously, they're not carrying full-on conversations, but I think it would be fun to have those 
those one-on-one -on -one interactions. And when I talk about freely roaming, we could have them up and down the alleyways, passing by Boris's office, passing by the kitty cat club. I think that would just be a really fun way to approach this. Next scare zone we have is the San Fran scare zone, which is terror on planet hell. So we've seen slaughter cinema movies expanded into their own houses before, but what about a scare zone? Well, terror on planet hell would bring us to planet hell, in which the Amazon cannibals would be roaming around on stilts, and there'd be a lot of unique set pieces with great hiding room for a lot of the other alien residents from planet hell. You'd also have plenty of astronauts cowering in fear, and a large stage section where they do some sort of sacrifice like they did with Conjure the Dark. And with this being a dream Halloween Horror Nights map, of course I have to include Death Eaters and Diagon Alley, specifically Nocturne Alley. I think it would be great if they just arrived unannounced and just roamed around Nocturne Alley, maybe go into Borgen and Burks, maybe have specific stations that they stand and scare people, almost creating a scare zone like atmosphere like they had over in Hollywood, as well as just incorporating free roaming Death Eater through Diagon Alley. Now the Central Park scare zone would be quite interesting, as we'd be seeing our first IP scare zone in quite a while, a zone themed after 1982's Creep Show. Now, Creep Show has been rumored to come in house form to Halloween Horror Nights for quite a while, but I think it would be really fun to explore this as a street. I think the entrance for this zone could be marked with a giant Creep Show comic, almost like the facade for HHN Hollywood's Creep Show house. And like the movie, this would be an anthology style zone, mixing together the characters from all the different stories from that original movie. You'd see characters like Nathan Granham, Fluffy, and of course, the Creep. And I think it would be really cool to keep that comic aesthetic going with some of the set pieces here. Obviously, you can go the trick or treat route and make a lot of the set pieces more realistic, like you're going into the stories. Or you can directly address that these are characters from a comic book. Creepshow, I think, is the perfect sort of sleeper IP for this area because Central Park isn't super, super large, but I think there's a lot of possibilities to make this a really, really fun scare zone. Finally, my last scare zone would be one that returns to a property, a house that we haven't seen in over. 20 years. In Hollywood, we would have Hell's High Horror Comes Home. This, of course, would be a sequel to the Hell's High Haunted House from the 1990s, which would see a fictional slasher named Michael Kruger take over high school. This time, he'd be taking over a Halloween party. I think you could do a lot like with Trick or Treat or Sweets Revenge or even Psychoscarapy. I know I mentioned those scare zones in the past, but have this guy kind of hanging around with the civilians, blending in with the costumes. While in the original house, Michael Kruger was terrorizing a bunch of high schoolers, there was an overall movie making theme as the high school was being used as a film set for a slasher movie. So you could incorporate a few movie set related props and lighting, kind of like how they did in Lights, Camera, Action, Eddie's Revenge, to sell this neighborhood Halloween party as a proper movie set and tie it in with that original house. Hell's High is a property that hasn't really been touched in quite a while, so I feel like this is a good way to revisit it. Finally, I wanted to end off with both of the shows. The first show would be Marathon of Mayhem, a show that I really love, and this version would be called Marathon of Mayhem Slashbacks. This would be a show chronicling the classic slashers, beginning with Psycho, including Bernard Herrmann's classic theme, and blending into Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, and ending off with Scream. I love the soundtrack to slasher movies. I think this could be a really fun backdrop for this Marathon of Mayhem. Finally, we have our Fear Factor stage show, which will be All Night Dying Rebooted, and will be like the director's previous show, Infestation, meets The Carnage Returns, Jack's show from HHN 25, in which it would bring many of the director's famous kills to life, bringing participants on stage. This will be just a fun Carnage show, nothing too complicated, just to add it a little bit for this year's event. And that's it. That's the event year. I hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble about my dream HHN, and if you did did enjoy and enjoy HHN speculation updates, vlogs, tips, you know, history, all that stuff. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I want to know what are your dream houses or scare zones or shows for HHN? Uh, drop it in the comments. It could be a thing you're like, hey, I kind of want to see so and so property, or I well, really want to see so and so original. Uh, let me know all of your thoughts in the comments below. Do you like this list? Would you go to this Screamport event? Let me know. Also, thank you again for 1,000 subscribers. I made this video for you guys, the hardcore Dreamport Productions fans. So I really hope you enjoyed it. And I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, before I go, I just wanted to make a quick announcement about an upcoming live stream, my first ever live stream. I'm going to be doing next Saturday, July 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's again, Saturday, July 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I cannot wait. Uh, I kind of wanted to do a Q&A, just talking about the theme parks, talking about HHN, answering any questions. More stuff is on the way, don't you worry. But until then, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.